All right, welcome back. It's still the news review segment right here on Breakfast Daily, and uh, it's interactive. I want to hear from you. Share your thoughts with us. Send your WhatsApp messages to us on 0204-447-033, and we'll read them out here on air. Now, uh, we also um, were expecting earlier uh, Victor Kujuga Adawudu, and unfortunately he can't make it. He had an emergency this morning. He asked us to uh, render his sincere apologies to you, the viewers. Um, so this is the message from uh, Victor Adawudu. We'll still try and see if we can reach him some other way, um, but we'll continue with the show as is. Well, we want to talk about um, Cynthia Morrison's um, predicament, as it were, uh, with the with the court case that she's facing and all of that. Let's go to, um, let me take you to citynewsroom.com and um, let's see if we can get into that story there. Um, just give me a moment here and uh, we'll get right into the story. All right, so citynewsroom.com, we have uh, 2024 elections Court blocks Cynthia Morrison's independent bid for Agona West. All right, so Cynthia Mamley Morrison's eligibility to contest Agona West as an independent candidate, parliamentary candidate, is in limbo as a district magistrate court in Agona Suedro has issued an injunction against her candidacy. Now, the court ordered. Yes, Cynthia Morrison should refrain from any actions regarding the nomination process for the position of Member of Parliament for Agona West constituency. Now, the deci decision comes at a crucial time with the 2024 ele general elections fast approaching, creating significant uncertainty about her political future in the constituency. Now, having successfully contested and won the seat on the ticket of the New Patriotic Party in 2016 and 2020, she lost the primaries in 2024, which triggered her decision to run as an independent candidate. Now, Morrison's decision to run independently was driven by her belief that the party had not given her a fair chance in the internal contest. According to her, the processes leading to the selection of a parliamentary candidate for the MPP were marred by favoritism and a lack of transparency, prompting her to take matters into her own hands. Now, she has been vocal in her criticisms of the party leadership, accusing them of marginalizing her despite her track record and contributions to both the constituency and the party's success in previous elections. Uh, former Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection secured 152 votes, losing to Christopher Arthur, who received 240 votes in MPP's April 13th primary. And uh, below you see the injunction there. <clears throat> there are three persons who are the plaintiffs with uh, Senator Morrison as well as the Electoral Commission as a defendant. And uh, that's the court's uh, order there. All right. So um, let me just read a portion of the court order here. It says, uh, interim order, whereas this case having come on the 11th day of September 2024 before his worship, Victor Kusi, a square district magistrate, Agona Suedro, and upon hearing Austin Kwabana, uh, Braco Powers, counsel for the plaintiff, Herein, the motion is granted. It is hereby ordered that a motion for interlocutory injunction restraining the first defendant from holding herself as parliamentary candidate and a second defendant from proceeding uh, with the nomination of uh, Cynthia Mamley Morrison as an independent parliamentary candidate until the matter is fully determined. It is further ordered that the defendants should refrain from any actions regarding the nomination process for the position of Member of Parliament for Agona West constituency with regards to Cynthia Mamley Morrison pending the resolution of this case. The case is adjourned to 15th of October 2024. All right, so let me just come back to you, um, Ibrahim, on this. Um, she was gender minister, mm. MP for Agna West, um, both 
2016 and 2020, she successfully won it. Now, primaries have come around again. This time around, she's claiming unfair treatment mm -hmm. in terms of uh, fair chance to, to compete mm -hmm. for the primaries. Um, and she's been quite vocal about this. Now, she wants to go independent. And some persons have also taken her to court. Let's start from the issue of the primaries, yeah. you know, aspect, mm -hmm. and uh, your thoughts on. on um, first and foremost, I think for viewers watching us on Channel One right now, mm -hmm. I just want to set the scene regarding the MPP primaries. Mm -hmm. Our chairman, Stephen Intim, mm -hmm. and our general secretary, Justin Frimpongkodia, JFK. Yeah. They were at pains for the last two years prior to the primaries to let every NPP member know that their handling of the elections would be free, fair and transparent. And they did that 100%. Mm. I sit here as somebody who contested the Lejukuku primaries. Okay. So it was done fairly across board, even to the point whereby uh, our general secretary, JFK mm. mentioned that if for any reason you cannot obtain your filing papers at the regional level, mm. you can come to national and receive it. And again, the, the papers were available online as well. Mm. I'm just giving viewers that context, that context mm. to mm. understand about the free favoritism or yeah. that uh, Honorable Cynthia Mamley Morrison is alleging. Mm. It shows bad faith on her part. Okay. And uh, respectfully, lack of integrity. Why do I say so? Hmm. As parliamentary aspirants, yeah. everybody signs a bond and it's enshrined within the NPP's own constitution that should you contest and lose, yeah. the, the, our constitution disbars you per your agreement, per the terms of being a candidate in the first place from contesting as an independent. Should you do so, there and then you can consider yourself having left the party. The party. Mm. But you see, you signed a bond saying, I will not go independent. Mm -mm. It's there. I signed the same bond, as did hundreds or thousands of other aspirants in the, uh, these past primaries. Yeah. So I can understand why there's a court injunction. I've yet to see the details of it. But when you talk about favoritism, mm. That is not a basis, a legal basis, upon which to say that you are contesting the veracity and the legality and the integrity of the primaries which you lost. Politics is about who likes who. Yeah. Who is more resourced. It's your responsibility as a candidate yeah. to make sure that you can engage on all those um, tributaries that will enable you to succeed. Mm. I'm talking financial making sure you can connect with all, you know, the delegates or polling station executives, though when they come to uh, election, call them delegates. Mm. You know, any other sector, that's your challenge to fulfill that. So if you say favoritism, somebody likes somebody better than you. Yeah. Is that the reason to say that you're going independent? Mm. So when you won in 2016, I'm talking Cynthia Morrison here, mm. people liked you than the other people you yeah. contested with, yeah. and you won. Yeah. Did they go independent? No. They supported you. Yeah. 2020, you won. Did those who contested with you go independent? No. Mm. They supported you. Mm. That's how you do politics. If you see me and Honorable Koboy, we work hand in hand mm. in Ledger Kuku. Okay. Because my agenda is to make sure that Honorable Koboy wins, make sure that uh, Alaji Dr. Muhammad Baumia becomes the president of Ghana. Okay. That's how you do your politics. Look, there are, there are only 275 places available in the parliament. We have 33 million people. <laughs> we all can't fit there. Yeah. So if you go and you don't win, another time will come, inshallah, if God gives us life. Yeah. But once you don't get it, you make sure that you're on board and make sure that the candidate who won wins the election. Okay, and I'm speaking as MPP, of course. And you make sure that your flag bearer, and inshallah, he will win. Dr. Mahmoud Baumir will win the election. You put all your resources, channel it into making sure that the ship wins mm. and not your little sailing boat mm. that is on the water. So uh, to Cynthia Morrison, I say you, you, you lack, uh, sorry, your actions are in bad faith and they lack integrity. 
because per the court injunction, you can see that, for me anyway, mm. there is no merit there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, let's just talk a little more generally about um, the culture of people choosing to go independent mm. um, as a result of maybe, uh, I, would, I don't want to say bad blood, you know, but people feeling like they haven't been treated fairly. Mm. Are there real situations where people haven't been treated fairly and therefore, you know, merit, if I can use that word advisedly, merit the right mm. to go independent? Or is it just a case of, you know, everybody who does this is really just doesn't know how to handle sour grapes? No, there, there are exceptions. Okay. I'll cite one exception, and that is Honorable Asiama, Fomena MP. Okay. Why am I giving his as an exception? Mm. You had the constituency executives, okay. led by the chairman, mm. maneuvering to disqualify a sitting MP. Okay. I'm talking the 2020 elections. Yes. Honorable Asiama, he was a sitting MP and was disqualified. Mm. I mean, when you look into it, it, it beggars belief. Mm. But alhamdulillah, Irabil Alami, we thank God Almighty, he prevailed. Yeah. He beat both the NDC and the NPP yeah. as an independent. Yeah. Because the NPP members mm. and the populace at large within his constituency okay. saw that what had happened was an injustice. Mm. What is it? it was egregious what they did to him, mm. and he won. So there's a few members there's a few, within the system yeah. who machinated against him exactly, yeah. to try and... Whereby he wasn't even allowed to contest. Mm. Had he been allowed to contest yeah. and then lost, mm. I don't think I would speak in the way I'm speaking today. And the NPP has to be eternally grateful to Honorable Asiyama. Mm. Why am I saying so? Because given the option, given that we had a, a hung parliament, he said, look, the party did not do this to me. It was mm. individuals within my constituency. Mm. So as for me, dear, I'm sitting with the majority. Yeah. Are you following yeah. me? That is the mark of uh, 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 a leader, mm. a patriot. Mm. And I, I can say that whether you're NDC or MPP. Mm. You know, yeah. he didn't look at the individuals and say, because of you three people, mm. I'm going to turn my back on the party. Okay. He said, no, you are individuals, but the party is with me. And indeed, mm. the party was with him. It's the party, those who voted for him, Honorable Asiyama, mm. well, generally MPP. Yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. And he was mature enough to see that. Mm. Now, you have incidences where, so that's the exception, where you go for an election of primaries and you lose. Uh, whether it's machinations or not, it's part of the game. Okay. <laughs> it's part of the game, but you've got to sail close to the wind and, and be... You know, you've got to be smart. You've got to be Machiavellian. Mm. You have to have that tenacity, that grit to find your way through. And if you don't, you know, your time will come. Mm. How long, how many times did His Excellency Nana Dodankwa Akufuado mm. attempt to become president? Alhamdulillah, yeah. thank God, he became president in 2016. Mm. Four times. Yeah. He went for primaries when J.O. Kufuor beat him. That's his first time. Mm. Then 2008 as flag bearer. Then 2012 as flag bearer. And 2016. Yeah. Ekome four times. <laughs> yeah, fourth is a charm. Yeah. Why am I citing his example? Because he, His Excellency, the President, Nanado Dankwa Gufuado, mm. continually reminds politicians when we've had meetings. And he said, look, never give up. No, the, President Akufa didn't leave the party. No. He didn't say, I'm against the party mm. or what have you. Mm. When the election, and I, I know because 2008, you know, we saw what happened in 2008. Yeah. And I, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it. He said, look, I've lost, though I disagree. And we went to court. Court, yeah. In 2012, as you know. Mm. I mean, that's the mind. And this is on a national scale. And I think the world continuing and Africa continuing Ghanaians continue to admire Nanado Danko Kufuado, the president, mm. for that statesmanship character that he exhibited. Okay. So that's the template upon which other politicians should take a cue from. The president had the election stolen from him. I, I, again, it's, what's past is past. I wish Victor was here and then we can, you yeah, know, yeah, draw, yeah, draw. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying that that's an example of okay. leadership. Okay. 
to see that if you don't win, yeah. go through the mechanisms yeah. that will give you victory on another day. But in Fomina, I remember, or let me see if my memory serves me right, the president went on the ground to say to the MPP electorate that anybody who supports any candidate apart from the MPP candidate, yeah. you know, is betraying the party. Yeah. You know, but then they stood strong and still voted for Honorable um, Isiam Mahan. And then sure. he then wins as an independent, comes into parliament and says, I stand with the majority. Sure. And that is the, the only course of action for the president to take. Mm. And it was the right statement for him to do so. You can never, ever criticize President Akufuado mm. for his statement regarding Fomena. Because he's thinking of the ship, not the canoe. Okay. You okay. have to think of the ship, not the canoe. Mm. The moment you say, well, okay, he should go in. And can you imagine a president saying, you should go independent? Mm. What does that do for oh, the like whole? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes in politics, you have to speak in the interest of the, the let's say, the party cause or the national cause mm. or the party interest. Some, you deal with the reality as it is. We call it real politic. Mm. You deal with things as they are. Mm. There's no way the president could have said any other thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, events had, uh, 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 had unfold, mm. uh, unfolded. We had the result there. And th what we had to do, I'm talking to the president, mm. is to speak to the issues as he saw them. And gender uh, and encourage unity or foster unity. And I, uh, and I think that, well, as I think, I would say, uh, without speaking for Honorable Asiyama, he knew or knows that the president at the time, I'm talking 2020, hmm. because he was a candidate, of course, that's what I'm saying, at the time. Yeah. You know, the president had to speak to the party interest. Why is it that Honorable Asiyama, when he came, said, look, I'm, 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 the party is my party. Hmm. He didn't cite the president or any other party, just those constituency executives yeah. who had manipulated. Yeah. And he said, I'm sitting with President Akufuado and the MPP. Mm. So well, that's my response to that. All right, cool. okay, let's go on to the final story here. Now, Kuhuma Hine uh, resigns as ADB board chair over- Oh, we're not doing the economy, I beg. You want to do the economy? Uh, whichever one. But I... this is this is the story that we have here. I understand. Do. Uh, which I economy understand. do you, what do you want to do? Hand on them. John Mahama was the, saying that- Oh, the, uh, uh, what? Oh, the, we'll do it when Victor what, comes. What, is it, is it Fitch? No, no, uh, no, 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 Moody's, no, Moody's, Moody's one. John Mahama was saying that uh -huh. the economy mm -hmm. under the MPP yeah. is worse than uh, under him. Yes, I heard you. Get it. Yes, but I if you want, when Victor comes next week, you, we can do that. Can, yeah. I, I prefer that it's here. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Because okay. okay. the economy has bounced back. But well, anyway, we'll... Well, well it clearly, I mean, with Moody's, um, you know, uh, raising, updating us and uh, giving us uh, a lift in our, our levels, it looks like... Uh, is definitely but I'm not just even citing them you know the economy is more than just your GDP your gross domestic product yeah it's what have you done holistically mm. to improve the let's say the financial space yeah. of your community community in Ghana yes yes imagine you are a father yeah. you have let's say 33 children mm. I in 33 million children mm. and in that space you've educated you know 5.7 million of your children yeah free SHS yeah in that same space You've seen how your trade surpluses have now come back to 3.1%. Mm. In that same space, you have uh, expanded the economy, whereby, you remember how much cocoa was, a bag of cocoa, the 64 kg? Mm. Um, it was 475 yeah, cities. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, We've gone up. in 2016. Mm. It's now 3,000 yes, Ghana. Yes, but, I, I, but I, I'm coming. But Ibrahim, yeah. let's yeah. be fair. Yeah. If you say 3,000 Ghana, yeah. um, it makes sense if you're looking at it nominally yeah. as Ghana cities. Yeah. However, if you do that, if you do the conversion into the dollar, yeah. you you realize that it's almost about the same as it was back then. And then what you do is you see, look at another factor, mm. which is cement. Mm. See how many bags of cement that 475 can purchase. Can so you look at it yeah. locally, okay. and then look how many how many more bags of cement now mm. that that cocoa mm. can. Can also yield. Mm. If you come to fishing, mm. when we started the closed fishing season, yeah. NDC were against it. But Nanado saw that, hold on, unless you have a closed fishing season so yeah. that the fish can do what? They can thrive. Do what they do yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah. 
<laughs> right? And then make sure you can thrive. Yeah. We have over 16%, 16.8% increase mm. in the yield. Mm. You know, so I mean, the economy is not just the figures. It's w the space. Two million jobs created out of, um, you know, planting for food and jobs. Maize production has increased by 76%. Again, I wish Victor was here because then we can speak to the same issues, but we can go back to the Kumahini mm. yeah. uh, issue. I'm hoping yeah. next week... Yeah, we well, can you can you can you can you can yeah. do that with him. Yeah. All right. So, um, Koma Hine uh, resigns as ADB board chair over bribery uh, and unethical conduct allegations. The graphic has this on the front page. Uh, we'll look at it. Let me just read portions of that story. The Koma Hine, the separate Ekwemwa Japan the second, has resigned as the board chairman of the Agricultural Development Bank PLC, effective Friday, October 11th, 2024. Now, it follows a directive by the Bank of Ghana for him to do so after a director and shareholder of Prabat Trading Limited, Collins Dakwa Abwaje petitioned the office of the president pleading for presidential intervention to help retrieve 2.406 million Ghana cities owed him by the then ADB board chairman. After receiving um, a copy of the petition, the Bank of Ghana on October 10th, 2024, directed Dasebre Ejipom to immediately resign and hand over in accordance with Section 103.2D of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2016. That's Act 930. Now, the BOG maintained that the Koyama Hine's continuous holding of office as a director of the bank was becoming untenable due to the irreparable damage the events had caused the image of ADB. All right, so. This is basically what has happened. Um, your thoughts on this as we wrap up the conversations this morning. Okay. It's unfortunate. Mm. And I say that because, you know, Dasa Brajapong is a leader. Mm. And when you remove the political leadership, the yeah. next leadership we have is our traditional leaders. Yeah. And so it casts such a, a negative mm. slight upon his leadership and traditional Rule. But again, yeah. I want to maintain the dichotomy in my submissions. These are individuals. Mm. You have so many other traditional leaders sitting on other boards yes. uh, as well. Many of them. Many, many of them. Mm. And they are adding value and that leadership, spa or, uh, leadership space to the boards on, upon which mm. they, they sit. Um, without knowing the nitty gritty. Because sometimes we come on TV, we read the headline and then we start giving our submissions like we know from A to Z of the issue. Okay. I, I want to read a little bit more because I have a little bit more time. So okay. let me just read a bit more. So there's a, another another article in the Ghanaian publisher. It takes it from a slightly different angle. It says a group defends Komahini rubbishes extortion claim against him. Mm -hmm. Now, a group calling itself well-meaning citizens of Kwewu has issued a strong denial in response to recent allegations of extortion and improper conduct involving the Sebre Kwewamoa, Japan II. Now, Kwewu uh, Hini, uh, and board chairman of the Agricultural Development Bank. Now, the group dismissed the claims as baseless in an attempt to tarnish the traditional leader's reputation. Now, the allegations were made by a businessman, Collins Dakwa Abwaji, who claims that Dasepre, in his roles as ADB board chair, chairman, facilitated a loan of 12 million Ghana cities for his company, Prabat. Now, Bajit further alleges that Dasebra requested a personal loan of 2 million Ghana CDs, which he says remains unpaid, prompting suggestions of misconduct. Uh, so, however, a statement from the well-meaning citizens of Kwewu refused these allegations, insisting that Dasebra acted with integrity. So, the story goes on there, and... Um, they claim that there is no evidence to suggest that Dasebre demanded or coerced Collins to, into granting him a personal loan. Uh, but a personal loan, a loan is a loan, whether it's personal or, or, yeah. or, or otherwise, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be paid back. Yeah. The issue that Collins uh, Abuaji seems to have is that his, the loan has not been paid back. Mm -hmm. You know, out of the 12 million that yeah. was given, yeah. it hasn't yeah. been paid back. And that's the issue. So I don't know what the group's yes. um, argument really yeah. Is, you know. I mean, in, in every 
issue. Mm -hmm. There are two sides of the story. Mm -hmm. You know, initially I was giving the preamble that we come yeah. on air, yeah. we read the headline, and then we proffer our mm -hmm. opinions mm -hmm. until you see another side of it. Yeah. But to the well-meaning group, yeah. I will say that, do you seriously think <laughs> that the Bank of Ghana, you know, with the SEC, mm -hmm. Uh, chaperoning its mandate, that's mm -hmm. the Securities and Exchange Commission. Commission yeah. These are the laws by which mm -hmm. financial institutions so operate. Yeah. Would then see a petition and blindfoldly say, yes, we agree. Mm. They would look at the merits of the petition. Yeah. This is the Bank of Ghana. Yeah. It doesn't want to get sued or mm. bring anything that would somehow show that it, it, it itself mm. lacks integrity. Yeah. They would have done due diligence mm. on this matter. Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't hear per what you've just read, the well-meaning group mm. saying that there's no, um, what do you call it, uh, veracity, yeah. no truth to, to the, the loan. To the the loan. loan is there. Mm. Prima facie, it has yeah. happened. Yeah. And as a board chairman, the conflict of interest is the first thing that rings alarm bells in my ears. Mm -hmm. You want money from my bank. <clears throat> my job is to do what? KYC, know your customer. Yeah. So my office, officers, mm. I'm talking the banking officers, mm. would do all the due diligence and say, yes, uh, quickly, we can lend you money. Yeah. We can see your, uh, your balance sheet, you know, uh, your return on investment, your break-even point, mm. and all those things, and say you are, you are credit worthy. Okay? Mm. Given that scenario, I should have nothing to deal with you. Okay. I'm talking as the board chairman. Mm. If I need a loan, let me go to another entity who is not looking for any favors from me. For me, yeah. The conflict of interest okay. alone yeah. is the number one alarm bell that I've read from this. So okay. to the well-meaning group, mm. Serbi, Serbi, you have to revise your notes. Mm. Sometimes don't defend the indefensible. Yeah. It doesn't do good uh, for our body politic. Yeah. He's a chief. So that's what makes it uh, in Ghana, okay, my don't learn. I have to curl my tongue. Mm. I can't just talk because he's our chief. Yeah. Do you get to me? So I have to be here on this platform. I have to be respectful how I speak about him. Mm. But it should have been the case that I did not need to be respectful. I'm, I'm coming. Because his name shouldn't be in this matter. No. Do you get me? So you keep that, that, that. That the, you know the gravitas that mm. you hold as a mm. leader, mm. it shouldn't come into it at all. Mm. It's unfortunate, and so well done to Bank of Ghana, um, because they have not done what another institution may have done. Mm. Oh, Manche Gile, Charlie, let's yeah. not go there. No, yeah. you have yeah. to look out for the interests of the Ghanaians mm. who have shares in ADB, and government is a stakeholder mm. in ADB. Yeah. Agriculture is our main source of income as an economy. Mm. Yes, we have oil, we have gold, but agriculture, yeah. okay, employs 64, um, sorry, 34% of our uh, 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 um, young men and, men and women. That space needs to be protected. Yeah. But, and, and the ADB is the financial institution mm. underpinning so many farmers. In terms of, I mentioned earlier, that you've had maize production mm. increase by 76% mm. under the planting for food mm. and jobs. <coughs> you know, Excuse other me. cereals, yeah. fish yields have gone up. All of these figures that I'm mentioning, farmers have what? Sought financial support mm. from institutions such as the ADB, not just the ADB alone. Yeah. Once we lose faith in the ADB, God, God, God forbid that it collapses, mm. then suddenly those farmers don't have access to ADB because nobody trusts them because they won't do the right thing when it comes to balancing their books. Yeah. And when you lose confidence in an institution, the ripple effects, Kweku, hmm. is more than what the well-meaning group are seeing. It goes right down to the farmer hmm. who now can't access. Hmm. He can't access money. He can't grow. Suddenly we have what? The Buffer Stock Company, yeah. which MPP introduced in 2019, suddenly becomes defunct. I mean, can you see yeah. the domino effect? Hmm. Hmm. Because when you do the right thing, the, the right thing will come about. I'm talking yeah. our economy. So it's more than just one personality. It's an institution. And it has to be protected by doing the right thing. So I call to the ADB board and the Bank of Ghana okay. for not allowing the traditional status mm. of Dasebra Japon to, to cloud, yeah, to intimidate, <laughs> intimidate them or cloud their thinking. Yeah. I call. All right.
Fantastic. Thank you very much for coming through. Thank We've you. We've had a good conversation this Thank morning. You. And um, we've been speaking with uh, Ibrahim Ajay. He is Assistant Secretary at the Office of the President. Um, Victor Adawudu from the NDC couldn't join us this morning because of an emergency he had. Well, we'll take a quick break. And this has been the News Review segment. We'll come back with more conversations, exciting ones you don't want to miss out.